So moving on. We have this little thing called TriCaster that you might have heard of before. Um, and, you know, even though, I mean, it was actually, what, IBC? We, we made the biggest change that I think anybody has ever made to live production switches. I, I think I can fairly safely say that. I mean, we brought four MEs in under $10,000. That's pretty big. Nobody, you know, four ME switchers four years ago, five years ago, I mean, that, that well, they didn't exist. That simple. Um, you know, animation buffers, PTZ camera support, macros. I mean, the list just goes on and on. And, you know, and that was just a few months ago. And so, you know, but we, we don't stop there. I mean, we, we, we need to move forward. And so, in terms of integration, and this was the slide that was censored a bit, a bit ago, you know, we're doing some really amazing innovative things here. So, you know, as you, you might have spotted, um, 3Play has a macro system, TriCast has a macro system. Both of these allow things to be triggered and build sequences. And so what we do is we allow these to completely work together. And so th this really is a truly amazing feature. You know, we have, we, if we'd done this a simple way, what we would have done is made it so that our production switcher here can talk over to our replay system there, and I press auto, and it'll automatically start playing that. But you know, we've gone way beyond that. We can build, make it so that a single key press could it could take your replay system. It could jump back five seconds from the current point. It could select a transition on your TriCaster, maybe your team's logo. It could then start the three play playing in slow motion, maybe at 25% speed. It could allow it to play for five seconds. It could then select a different transition and transition back to live on the TriCaster. And a single press on one system can do both of, all of that stuff. That is game changing because now, you know, pretty much, you, I mean, the, the kind of shows you can build and the, the number of people you need to operate them, it's just, you know, I mean, it, it changes everything. You know, and we aren't, we aren't limited to that. This allows for complete control of graphics systems. And my little asterisk is that we're working with a lot of the graphics, you know, the graphics vendors out there to help integrate this, and some already will. But, you know, I mentioned that, that thing where it transitioned to the 3Play. We could actually make it also control the graphics system, select a particular page, bring up a logo that might have some, um, you know, the replay. This is a replay, or pull up some player stats or something else. And that can be integrated into all of this. So now you have the system where a single press of a key can just do these unbelievably complicated kind of integrated things that, that, that are just, you know, kind of, I mean, the, you guys will come up with ways to use this that I have never conceived of. And, uh, you know, it's just setting the, the, the groundwork for truly amazing, you know, things. We allow for network tally of three-play systems. So that if you're sitting there on a three-play, you know whether your output is being put on live by the TriCaster guy so it, you don't pull up the wrong clip and mess up the show. We have GPIs. This is in TriCaster 2. So TriCaster can freely get GPIs in. And I should say how this works because it's kind of cool. You know how in TriCaster you create a macro and then you say, I'm going to assign this to a keyboard shortcut. So you press the listen key, and then you press the keyboard shortcut that you want it to be assigned to. That's how it works in GPIs. So you create a macro, or you record a macro that does what you want, and then you say listen, and then you trigger a GPI that's attached to the macro. And you can have any number of these. You can have hundreds of these, and they can also be output. So we can take GPIs in, but we can also have GPIs out. So that you can make something within your TriCaster system, or your three-play system, that could switch all your lighting on, <laughs> or operate a nuclear power plant. No, please don't do that. That is a bad idea. <laughs> but you get the idea. You know, and obviously all that stuff can already be triggered by MIDI events, control surfaces, and keyboard triggers. And I put these up there because the moment you start to look at all of this as a whole, you know, I mean, pretty much you've built a system where anything can be triggering anything within the video environment. And that is really, you know, very exciting. So now I'm going to do another new tech first. I'm going to be the first presenter at NAB to ever pull up code on a slide. And so we need, I need to enter the, the matrix here. Um, the, the, um, we have added full TCP IP control to both TriCaster and 3Play. We've actually had that for some time, but it's really been quite complicated. And we've simplified this a lot. In fact, the code that I pulled up here is enough to completely control a TriCaster system. And the fact that I could fit this on one slide is staggering. And what this means, you know, I know that we're not all programmers here. Um, but what this does mean is that if you're integrating and you're using a Py Python, which lots of people know, or JavaScript, or you know, any number of things, you can actually build integrated systems that take all of those pieces that I mentioned before and pull it all in together to make something that's really vastly more sophisticated and customized to what the customer wants. Um, and, th and that, you know, once again, it just allows for people to build new solutions around what we're doing in ways that just really weren't possible before. ISO recording. Um, this is something where we were the first. 
Um, as best I know, we were the first people ever, about three years ago, to add ISO recording to our production switches, which was you know, a big thing. And we're still, I believe, by far the best. You know, we're the only people who really do multi-channel recording, um, up to eight channels. Um, we have full fail safety. I don't know that people even necessarily know this. I could have a, uh, a, a TriCaster system recording on stage here, and I could just pull out the plug. And those files will be valid no matter what. Um, that is unique, and you know, that's kind of important. You know, when I talked about saving an hour here or there, the fact that you have your, the footage from your show, even in the, the, you know, in the event of some kind of disastrous event, like Andrew pulling the plug out, um, is probably a pretty good thing. You know, we have 422, we have 24-bit audio, and we have full time code. But you know, we're gonna really take this to the next level. Um, we have, and I'm gonna come to the first one in a second, but we have, it works like an integrated replay system. So before, when you were using TriCaster, what you needed to do is you needed to mark the in point, then the out point, then you could use that clip. You don't need to do that anymore. You can use clips while they're still recording. And in fact, if you press shift record, I'm telling you how to do it actually, um, it will take the last four seconds or whatever happened in your show and insert it into the DDR. So you, even if an event happens, like Andrew's falling off the stage and you didn't have time to mark the in point, hey, you just say, Andrew fell off stage, shift record, it's in your DDR. But you know, we have social media. We have this full social media publishing system. So shift record of Andrew falling off the stage could be pushed to the world live, so let's not do that, but um, <laughs> you get the idea. Frame synchronized recording, that sounds really dry. Um, it's a big deal, and I'll explain why, but unfortunately to explain why, I've got to just take a step back and say what ISO recording is. You know, ISO recording is meant, you know, if I was doing this in a traditional environment, I'd have a stack of tapes this high, and what I'd do before the show is I'd run around the cameras, and I'd put tape into the cameras, then before the show starts, I'd run around, try to press record on them as quickly as possible, maybe if I was smart, I would get a bunch of friends to come and I'd shout, press press record, and hopefully they press record about right. I don't want to do it too long before the start of the show, because otherwise I'm going to run out of tape. And then at the end of the show, I'd run around again, press stop, hopefully none of them ran out of tape, and I'd take all those tapes, I'd digitize them, and then I'd be able to edit them. Now, ISO recording as it exists today um, solves about half of those problems, actually mo most of those problems. What it does is it, it replaces all that tape, hey, it goes onto hard drive, really cool. Um, and you press a single record button and it starts them all on the exact same frame. But there is this hidden problem in all of that that, that really is still an issue. Um, and that is that you know, one camera here might be running at 29.97 hertz, and one over there might be running at 29.9701 hertz. Sounds like a tiny difference, doesn't it? But it's not. Because if this is a one hour show, you know, those are going to be different by a few frames at the end of the show. Happens if you're recording to tape two. And so you take all that recorded footage and you put it into a nonlinear editor and hey, you have to sync them up still because they're all slightly different lengths. And I know, I've spoken firsthand to a bunch of customers, and hey, people within new tech are trying to edit our shows, and this is a lot of work. I mean, we, we've solved half the problems, but this solves it completely. Basically, inside TriCaster now, when it ISO records, there's this virtual gen lock, and what it guarantees is that all your camera feeds are completely synced. So you wouldn't need to try to gen lock all these cameras. And so what comes out of an ISO record now is absolutely completely locked in terms of length. Everything's completely synchronized. And this can save hours. It really can. And I'm sorry it took so long to explain, but it's actually a very big feature. Now, there's so much more, including the fact that ISO recording is now on all pro models. So 410 includes it too. There's so much more that we can say about this. I mentioned, I gave the hint up front that we now allow DDR, DDRs to select the icons. There's so much more. I, I don't have time to go through it all. And so, I, you know, you need to come by the booth and see this. But there's a lot of big stuff there. Multiviews. Multiviews are really cool. We, whatever we do in multiviews, we would get requests for more. And so just like the 8000, we're allowing all of our pro TriCasters, that's from 410 right the way up to 8000, to completely configure the multiviews. You know, you can right click on any, any, any of the layouts, and you can choose your own layouts, build your own layouts, and select what the source is. So that just completely opens it up. You can select whether you want to show the, the, the four, three safe areas, and all this cool stuff. And on top of that, you get to choose your own station logos, show the clocks from the game, and a bunch of other cool stuff. The station logos alone is a big deal to a lot of people. You know, if, if you have a, if you have, a, if you work, or if, you, if you have your favorite team and you're doing their production, being able to have your TV station or your team's logo up there, kind of a big deal. You know, we get lots of requests for more outputs, more flexible outputs, and you know, we're gonna do that. Um, 
all current Pro TriCaster units will support far more flexible assignment of outputs. And I can't completely explain it here. Talk to the sales guys. Come to the show floor. Talk to me. I'll help you explain what this means. But it means that you can do a whole bunch more with your TriCaster than before. And on top of that, all of the Pro TriCasters now can fully address four completely separate VGA displays in, a, in, in addition to all the other stuff they do. And this works going back to every shipping unit. In fact, some of you might have wondered. In fact, I've had some of you email and say, you left off the, the, the plate that used to cover those motherboard outputs before. It wasn't a mistake. This, this was planned for some time. And so you can now, on all of these units, you can use four outputs. You software upgrade, you can get a whole two more outputs. And this matters, because before, you know, you needed, if you wanted to go to a projector, you often needed to give up your multi-view. You can now keep your multi-view and have two extra projectors on top of that. And that's, you know, and that's just the beginning. There's so much more you can do. You know, when it comes to... <laughs> when it comes to visual effects, nobody comes close to us. We have, I mean, when you look at what we do, I mean, we, we can handle eight channels of virtual sets at once with reflection, with bump maps, all that stuff. We've got animation buffers, animation stores. I mean, the list just goes on and on. I mean, it, you know, this is an area where we are already very strong. And so, you know, we're just going one step further because it's really useful and really fun, which matters a lot too, is we have full support for all of the Photoshop blend modes um, in ME layers. And we have these really cool bokeh blur effects that are going to come with it. And you've got to play with them. It's awesome. It makes for great looking shows. And it's a lot of fun. So I, I've given you the overview of, you know, really free play, which we believe is really you know, going to change the world and change the world of sports production and TriCaster. And that's our first two products. I've actually got about 20 more to go through. So I reckon I've been about um, 30 minutes here. So I think I've got about another 10 hours to go. I might need a rest here somewhere. <laughs> I'm kind of joking, um, if you didn't get that. Um, you know, we have this third party network. This is a very big deal. You know, I have spent time talking about two products. Uh, here at the show, we're announcing over 20 more products that work directly with ours. And you know, every one of these products in the area that they work is just as sophisticated as what we do. And for your customers, this, and you know, for us, this is a, you know, this means a lot. This means that if they need something that's, you know, we don't do, they have all these ways of doing it now. And you know, new tech, I mean, new tech, you know, we, we, it's not just about new tech anymore. I mean, what we have got is this, this whole world of products that work together and do things together. And a lot of them, we're working on integrating them together. So there's really just amazing opportunities. And nobody, nobody in the industry, and probably nobody in, this, in the industry ever, has had something like this. And so this is a huge asset of ours. And it's just as important as the products themselves. <laughs> 